Hello everyone, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. How are we doing? Okay, so right now we're looking at my Celestial Pearl Danio tank. It's a five gallon aquarium, heavily planted, and its primary inhabitants, at least from a fish perspective, are the Celestial Pearl Danios. There's about eight to 10 in here. And aren't they gorgeous? They look just like tiny brook trout. Of course, they're nothing like a brook trout, but they look like them. And I'm super attracted to these fish. It takes a while for them to get colored up and happy in a system, but once they do, they're gorgeous. They stick together. They're frisky and feisty and they're not that hard to spawn although i do not have any fry in here i did somewhat hopefully set up moss a moss carpet up there which is doing really nice that's christmas moss hoping they might deposit eggs there or perhaps elsewhere in the tank i have quite a few other inhabitants um ram's horn snails do really well in here i pull some out every day there's a group now they're the lovely red variety which i prefer most versus that kind of brown one there uh, i pull all of them out and feed my puffer fish snails escargot if you will in here are also a ton of cherry shrimp there's a beautiful uh, deep red one some maybe can oh, we just jumped over to pygmy Hasbora's catfish, two pygmy quarry cats. There those two are. Frickin' frack. Uh, it, I was saying that when they're deep red, they can be considered a Bloody Mary. This one has some white in it, so I don't think so. There's another one back there. There might be a hundred cherry shrimp in here. And then what's really cool in the plant world is this Japanese clover. By trimming the tops, and using highlight, I'm able to create a pseudo carpet with it. And so I keep it lower to the ground. And so when these little tendrils start to reach up, I clip them and sometimes I replant them elsewhere. But either way, I'm digging the way this carpet kind of forms. There you see a large Amano shrimp, part of my cleanup crew, busy, busy, busy. There's probably eggs on this, but on this female, but they won't come to fruition because brackish water is needed for a mono shrimp to reproduce, although they will mate clearly, or at least create eggs and carry them to, to term, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I know they cannot uh, effectively spawn in a freshwater system. Here's a grand view of a tiny tank. This ecosystem is one of my most stable. Um, the plants stay the same, which is good. The only thing I really trim are these Japanese clover. Otherwise, the Anubius Petite is a lush bunch, which is something I love in a lot of my tanks. And then I have one sword plant here. I pull leaves out of this periodically to keep it from overtaking the tank. And then as I said, I have this sort of kingdom of moss sitting atop that driftwood right near the light. So it's really healthy, really green, no algae. As a matter of fact, this tank has surprisingly little algae and I do not run CO2 in this tank. So the cleanup crew must be doing its job. I must be doing my job, but it's a wonderful tank. And I love the Celestial Pearl Daniel. They're also called Galaxy Rasboras or CPDs. They used to be a bit rarer, but now they're fairly common. I got these from Aquatic Arts, which is a reputable high-end website dealing in freshwater fish and specializing in nano fish such as these nano being small tiny tiny fish for tiny aquariums 
So there it all is. Pretty nifty, huh? God, I love this tank. I hope you do too. Always keep your hands in a tank. Stay safe. Ciao for now.